Hey, today I'm going to show you how to set up your natural dye kitchen at home. If you're new to natural dyes and want to see how easy it is to get started, I've got some tips for you. Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Billy New. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to do any dyeing, but I just wanted to take you through what, what my equipment looks like in my kitchen just in case any of you were thinking of setting up your own natural dye kitchen or wanting to start trying out natural dyes at home. Um, it's really not that much stuff that you need to get started. So most of the stuff you'll be able to find in your kitchen, you might already have it, you might be able to find it really easily at a secondhand shop or a charity shop or something. But um, yeah, just really basic stuff. So I've got a few, um, this is my biggest, pot it's aluminium and I this is my strictly no iron pot so iron is a, a powder that can um, a metal powder that can change the colors of, of of the results that you get and it's really really potent so this one is strictly no iron um, I've got some stainless steel pots I've got a couple of these I use them to do mordanting in. Um, I've got one outside with indigo in as well. This is my steamer, my makeshift steamer, a lid I found in the Brockant shop, which is like a secondhand charity, well, not charity shop, but it's a secondhand shop and there's loads of those here in France. Um, I found this at a car boot sale. And so I made my own steamer, which you can easily do. You can also, if you haven't got a steamer, you can just put something in the bottom of a pan and place your things on top. Quite easy to do makeshift, makeshift stuff. Um, I've got gloves, strainers, this amazing strainer for big batches of stuff. Um, these kind of bowls are really handy just for kind of soaking things in or just keeping things separate. You can't really have too many of those. Big plastic pots for, again, mordanting or soaking things. This is my favorite pot, which has actually got some weld in it at the moment from the Mazzy Natural Dyes. I've used it once. I've just dried it out and I'm gonna use it again. But this is my best dye pot. I bought this from um, a secondhand shop again. It's aluminium. And for some reason, I just get the best pinks with avocados, the best oranges with onion skins. Um, it's just a little bit too small. So I don't know why exactly, because I have other aluminium pots as well, but they just don't get the same results. So I love this pot. So I've mainly only got aluminium and stainless steel pots. Um, stainless steel are kind of the best non-reactive pots uh, in my opinion, you just get a really true colour. Um, aluminium can sometimes help with the colour fastness. They can be, they can change the colour slightly sometimes, but only very slight, slightly, I've found. Um, so those are the two main types of pots that I use, but you could also use copper because you can get some cool um, colour modifications with copper. Um, you could also use enamel, um, enamel pots. So that's enamel. Um, and they would be non-reactive as well, as long as they didn't have any chips in them like this one where it's gone rusty. So that's the basics of the types of pots. So some other things that come in really handy are spoons and utensils. You could use stainless steel because it's non-reactive, like I said before, but I really like using wooden spoons because you get these cool colors from the different dyes. This is madder, I think. And this one's maybe a mad mix of madder and avocado. And also these spoons have been carved by my boyfriend. He's filming at the moment behind the camera. Um, he does them by the river. And we were thinking about maybe putting some on, on the website to sell. So let us know in the comments if you, if you think that's a good idea, if you like them, if you've got anything to say about them, that would be appreciated. This one's a really cool one. This is a, onion skin one I think. I really like the way the handle kind of curves round. 
we use them in our kitchen as well for cooking. So it's really important to remember this when you're setting up your dye kitchen that anything that you use for natural dyeing or dyeing in general must be kept separate from stuff that you use to cook with because although most of the things that you work with are non-toxic etc you never know what what thing what fabric might be treated with or for example if you're using alum or iron you don't really want to get that in your pots that you're going to be eating from um yeah and so back to spoons it's a good idea to have some you know normal teaspoons and tablespoons with long handles it's quite helpful tongs for bundle bundle dyeing when you're opening the the pot and it's hot it's nice to be able to just turn things over or have a look at them with something like that we've also got spray bottles they come in really handy spraying vinegar or just dampening cloth and these are my most recent most favorite addition to my kitchen um, and they're beaver sticks which I put in my dye kit as well the, my scrunchy dye kit that we sell on our our website and they're collected from the river and they've all been cut by beavers which I love you can see this one has um, started to take the color from where I've been using it to bundle dye so yeah the sticks can be used as stirring utensils or bundling utensils you could also use something like this this is a piece of copper pipe so you'll get an interesting um, reaction from the metal with the dyes like I said before if you use a copper pot to cook uh, to cook your your dye material as well that can end up in interesting colors so those are all my bundling things another really useful thing to have which I never seem to have enough of is glass jars or jars to keep bits in so like I collect my avocado stones and when they're dry I put them in here um, these bits are logwood pieces of logwood that I've already used and then I've dried them out because you can use them again just we eat a lot of honey from the market in this house so I always save these big jars um, because they always come in handy um, what else have we got oh yeah you things like scissors obviously sharpie is really good for labeling jars string for doing your bundling or you can use elastic bands if that's what you want to do if you want to experiment with bundle dyeing um, a mask is really helpful if you're using and really important actually if you're using um, powders so for example without getting too deep into mordants and stuff if this is iron powder ferrous sulfate and this is really good for um, using after you've dyed your fabric it will change the colors it will sadden the colors making them deeper darker blues and greens or grays um, but I always use a mask and gloves when I'm when I'm using that and the other thing that's really helpful to have is alum as a mordant or if you don't want to use any of these kind of um, powders you could always make a mordant binder a binder mordant with soy milk which we've also got a video on some other really useful things which I like to have are these nut milk bags you can see yesterday or maybe the day before I strained some really reduced avocado dye to make some paint with Billy and it just they're good because they catch all the tiny bits if you want a really clear dye, dye bath then they catch all the tiny bits that's one I haven't used you can get big ones or small ones and then you want some old cloths these ones have been used over and over and over again and you start to get some cool colors I mean that's pretty much black that one but just for wiping up mess or straining things or cleaning spoons or those are really helpful so the other things you're going to need to start your natural dye um, kitchen is natural are uh, natural dyes so if you want to keep it really simple and just experiment straight away with things that you've already got in the kitchen onion skins are my absolute favorite at the moment and kind of have been for a while these are orange onion skins you get really nice oranges and browns um, from them and they're free and you probably got them 
you know, when you're cooking, so they're just lying around if you save them. Um, so they're really, really good. Nice, you get a really rich, strong dye bath from them straight away. So they're just really satisfying to work with. So if you're new to natural dyes, it's a nice one to start with. Also avocados. Most people that I know like avocados or eat avocados. So those are ones that you can get, keep in your kitchen, which are really easy to use. We've actually got a couple of eBooks on how to dye with avocados and how to dye with onion skin. So if you're really interested or want something, some guidance to follow, you can just hop over to our website and check out those eBooks. The other things that are really great and quite often free are flowers. So if you've got any flowers in your garden, you can try dyeing with them. These are marigolds. They make a really nice kind of yellowy orange and a greeny colour if you use iron to modify them. And also I think I've got some little Coreopsis flowers in there, which really pack a punch. They're all from George at Balwick, Balwick Blue. I'm not quite sure if I'm saying that right, but she sells these and they're really beautiful. And they're from the UK, so that's cool. They're nice and local. So if you decide to start going a bit deeper into natural dyeing and you want to try out some things that you might not be able to grow so easily like marigolds or find in your kitchen like onion skins, you could, there's loads of cool um, shops online where you can buy things like safflower. Um, this is from the Mazi Natural Dyes. Um, this makes kind of pink, I haven't dyed with this yet actually, it's kind of on my list to do, but it makes pinks and yellows and oranges I think so that could be quite fun. Weld like I talked about earlier. Indigo is a really fun one to dye with. Um, madder. So many great options you just have to kind of have a look on the websites and order them and just experiment. You just have to get just do it without being frightened or scared of what the outcomes might be and you'll get some cool results. Another thing I forgot to mention was scales. Um, I've actually spent the last, I don't know, two years dyeing without scales and this is a really recent addition to my dye kitchen and they are um, digital and amazing and I love them. So they do come in really handy if you're starting to take natural dyeing a bit more seriously and you really want to know about quantities and record things. So yeah, these are really useful. So you'll also need something to dye. So you've got all your equipment ready. You'll need some fibers to dye. Natural dyes don't take to synthetic fibers. So you'll need to find some natural fibers like uh, wool or that's wool as well. Pom-poms that I've been making for some hats I'm doing. Silk. That's silk too, bundle dyed. Um, bamboo fibre is a nice one to work with, hemp, uh, linen, cotton, anything natural, just not synthetic, and you can start experimenting. I'm going to put these in some mordant now, and then I'm going to dye them today for my shop. So I've been playing with natural dyes for maybe three years now. In the first two years, I was just playing around with onion skins and avocados and simple things like that. And it's only in this last year that I've started to take things much more seriously and it, I am now starting to feel that I do need a bit more space rather than just our tiny kitchen. Um, a, bit, a bit more space to make mess and not worry about splashing everything and dirtying everything. And I feel like I need some bigger pots as well. So, But that's only after three years of doing natural dyeing and I've managed to create my brand and do everything that I do for Billy New just with what you see here. So if you're interested in starting natural dyes, just go for it. Just do it. Just start it. It's really easy and really simple and really fun and you won't regret it.